All right, students, thank you for turning into my screencast on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. There you are. Okay, big picture, right? We should always understand the big picture. Uh, this should look familiar to you. The sun shines down on plants, giving uh, them light energy. Plants use that light energy to uh, turn carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. We love to breathe in that oxygen. <sighs> And we love to eat that glucose. We either eat it from plants or we eat it from animals that ate plants. We, in a process called cellular respiration, break down glucose with the assistance of oxygen to make ATP. ATP is energy. It's the party molecule. It gets things done. This happens in the mitochondria. As we do cellular respiration, we give off water and carbon dioxide. Well, guess what? That's what plants need. The products of cellular respiration are the reactants of photosynthesis. The products of photosynthesis are the reactants of cellular respiration. It's a wonderful cycle that's really, really important. You're going to see this happen within photosynthesis and cellular respiration as well. So let's move on. You should pause the video and ask yourself, can you explain the cycle here? Okay. I love this picture because it gives you a good reminder of the light reactions and the Calvin cycle before you dive uh, very deeply in. You always want to see the big picture. We got the sunlight hitting the chloroplasts in our plants. Inside the chloroplasts are these flat green pancakes called thylakoids. Thylakoids are special. They have chlorophyll in them. The chlorophyll is going to get excited. It's going to do the electron transport chain and it's going to make some ATP. It also makes NADPH. Here's how I would love for you to think about these. ATP is energy. It's the party molecule. And NADPH is like a taxi cab. It can hold two high energy electrons that are going to the party and a hydrogen ion. So it goes from being NADP plus, the light reactions happen and it becomes NADPH. Same for ADP, that dead cell phone, the, the party battery that's no more, gets energized in the light reactions. ATP and NADPH go to the Calvin cycle. In the Calvin cycle, they're going to combine with enzymes and carbon dioxide to make sugars. ATP and NADPH provide the energy to make this happen. This is why it's called an endergonic reaction. Don't worry if you don't know that word. The Calvin cycle is going to give off NADP plus and ADP. Notice once again, just like photosynthesis and cellular respiration students, the products of one are the reactants of the other. Also see what's coming in. Big picture, right? Water is coming into the plant. Oxygen is going out. Pretty good for us. Carbon dioxide is going into the plant and sugars are coming out. Another great thing for us. So let's dig a little deeper into the light reactions in the Calvin cycle. Oh, first of all, I forgot you need to know where this happens, which is the chloroplast. I'm not going to read this slide to you. You already took it down in your notes. You should pause the video and see if you can label things in the chloroplast and remember where the light reactions happen versus where the Calvin cycle happens. Ah, here's a little absorption spectra chart. So this is the colors of, that are absorbed by plants. And you can see there's two types of chlorophyll. There's also carotenoids, which absorb colors as well. Um, they come out in the fall in the in forest so that you can see uh, the leaves changing color. You'll notice that the green color isn't absorbed very much. It gets reflected, and that's why most plants look green. You all did a little lab on this. Uh, so the color, or really the wavelength of light, affects the photosynthetic rate of it. Okay, here we go. Here are your big notes on the light dependent reaction students. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and read this slide to you. You should review it. And what we should, what I'm gonna do is walk you through a figure of it. So this should help you as you review your notes. What I want you to do after that is to draw this out, draw it on a piece of paper and see if you can explain to a friend, your dog, whoever else, a wadi cat, your parents, how this works. So light comes into a photosystem. Photosystem uh, is a bunch of proteins and it's got chlorophyll in it. 
and it's going to excite some electrons. Those the electrons, when they get excited, are going to leave and go down an electron transport chain. So the electrons are like, woohoo, I'm out of here. Well, we need to replace those electrons that have what? We replace them by splitting water. Very cool. The water is split. The electrons are taken from each H. Let's see if I can draw. Here's an H. An H, a hydrogen, has one proton and one electron. So the electron gets stolen to go up here into chlorophyll. And you're left with the H plus. The H pluses accumulate here on the inside as the electrons go through this chain. When the electrons get here, they join up with NADP plus and a hydrogen ion to make NADPH. This is the empty taxi cab, full taxi cab. Full taxi cab has two electrons and one hydrogen ion. But whoa, we still have all these H pluses or protons on the inside of the thylakoid. Notice how we're using stuff from our other units. You can see that here's a lipid bilayer. They're not going to get through this bilayer, right? It's going to repel something that's charged. Here is a protein. So what they're going to do is they're going to flow through this protein called ATP synthase. And it's beautifully named because it, it makes ATP. It synthesizes ATP. As the H pluses flow through ATP synthase, it turns it like a rotor. And as it turns this rotor, it's going to actually join, sorry, I got to find my camera, ADP and a phosphate to make ATP. So ADP has two phosphates, ATP has three. The motor actually, or the rotor, joins the third one on and ATP is made. So all because light excited these electrons, we're able to make ATP and NADPH. If you sit there and think about it, this is really a beautiful thing. It's really cool, right? We're using a concentration gradient like we learned about with diffusion. We're looking at bilayers. We can see photosystems. We can see enzymes. And we make these goals of NADPH and ATP. All right, here we go. Let me get rid of these guys. All right, so the light independent reactions are the Calvin cycle. They go hand in hand. They're, they're, they're named the same. So the Calvin cycle does not require light and occurs in a strong. It's going to use this ATP and NADPH to make sugars. Here it is. Here's a simplified figure. You do not need to memorize all of this. I told you a couple times in class, what you need to know is that carbon dioxide comes into the plant through the stomata. The stomata are holes that let oxygen and carbon dioxide in. So the carbon dioxide diffuses in. It's going to match up with this enzyme called Rubisco, and it's going to join a five-carbon molecule called ribulose biphosphate. Don't need to know the names of these. So carbon dioxide comes in, joins this molecule, and becomes a six-carbon molecule. That six carbon molecule is unstable, students, so it's going to split in half. It's then going to go through a series of enzyme mediated reactions with ATP and NADPH. So ATP is going to use energy, NADPH is going to put uh, high energy electrons on it, and it's going to change these molecules into the molecule that can make glucose. So even though it looks the same, three carbons and a phosphate, it's going to become a different molecule that can become glucose. The beauty of it is that it makes one glucose for six carbon dioxides, and then it recycles the leftover G3Ps to remake the starting molecule. You might ask yourself, why don't we just join six carbon dioxides together? This is actually more efficient for the plant to go through this cycle. So it's pretty cool. All right, so you should pause the video and think to yourself, can you get through this? You should also check out your notes. Here's another version of it. So carbon dioxide coming in. Um, I, I picked this one because you can just kind of see the different turns of it. 
So you can pause the video and ask yourself that. And then last thing here, some factors that affect photosynthesis. So you did your lab with us. A lot of you all did color of light, which was cool. You put that saran wrap over your beakers. Some of you did light intensity, like how close the light bulb was to it. Nobody really did temperature and not too many people did carbon dioxide. But these are the four factors that can, can affect the rate of photosynthesis. You should research them and see what ranges are best for these factors for photosynthesis. All right, it's quiz time. Can you explain what's going on in this picture? This is just like the one I showed you earlier, the light reactions in the Calvin cycle. Pause the video, rewind, check out your notes, check out your worksheets, check out your book homework. Your book is really good, pages 414 and 415 on this one. All right, cellular respiration, here we go. Sugar that the plant made, we need to break it down into energy or ATP. If we just broke it down in one step, it would set our bodies on fire and kill us. We have to break it down in a uh, series of steps so that we can get an ATP out of it. The waste products are gonna be carbon dioxide and water. Here we go. There's three stages. There's glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. You just need to know the basics about each one. And then I also want you to know how the electron transport chain, the cellular respiration, how it uh, mimics photosynthesis and photosynthesis mimics it. Here we are, we're in the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm, glucose is gonna get split in half. That just helps us to be able to work with the molecule. We use a little bit of energy to start this. So we put two ATP in, notice how once once the party molecule ATP is used up, it becomes ADP. Because of that, we're going to be able to make some NADH. Doesn't that look familiar? Woohoo! NADH is another taxi cab that can carry two high energy electrons to the uh, party of the electron transport chain. And it's going to make some ATP. Notice how it makes four, it required two. So overall, it's going to make two ATP. That's important because if we don't have oxygen, then all we can do is glycolysis. Out of glycolysis, we get two pyruvate molecules. Uh, sometimes you'll see that sold in GNC. Here is the pyruvate. It's going to diffuse into the mitochondria to the very inside in the mitochondrial matrix. While it does that, it's going to match up with an enzyme called coenzyme A and it's going to get changed from a three carbon molecule to a two carbon molecule. Well, where does that carbon go? It's going to combine with oxygen to become CO2 and be exhaled from the body. You can also see during that process, we make another NADH, another taxi cab to the party. Once we're inside the matrix of the mitochondria, we engage in the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is going to take this, uh, carbon, uh, this two carbon molecule, and it's going to manipulate it to make lots of NADH and FADH2, another taxi cab going to the party. It's going to make a little bit of ATP, and it's going to make some carbon dioxide. Notice how it releases the coenzyme A to go back to the beginning. It's going to make uh, these NADHs later on will be changed back to NAD plus to go back to glycolysis and here to the Krebs cycle. So what's the important thing that comes out of this? Pyruvate goes in and what comes out? NADH, the taxi cab to the party, ATP or energy, and FADH2, another taxi cab to the party. Here it is in a little more detail. Here comes the pyruvate, the three carbon molecule. It goes through the link reaction and becomes a two carbon molecule. It's going to combine with a four with a four carbon molecule that's already there and become a six carbon molecule. This is just like the Calvin cycle. It combines with a molecule that's already there because that's just more efficient. As it does this, a bunch of reactions are going to happen. It's going to make a bunch of NADH and it's going to make some ATP and the FADH2. That's as much detail as you need to know. If you want to know more, that's great. You can push yourself and you can check it out in your book. Or you can talk to me before or after school or during lunch. All right, here's where the real party happens. The electron transport chain. It should look just the same. 
NADH comes, drops off its electrons, drops them off at the party. FADH2 drops them off a little further down the chain, but drops them down for the party as well. They're like the latecomers. As they get dropped off, when the electrons, the high energy electrons, go through one of these proteins, it's going to pump hydrogen ions or protons to the outside. This is just like photosynthesis, but in photosynthesis, it got pumped to the inside of the thylakoid. Here, it's getting pumped to the outside. I'll draw photosynthesis. They get put here on the inside. In cellular respiration, they're getting put towards the outside. It's the inner membrane space. Okay. Oh, that looks like a smiley face. There we go. So all these H pluses are pushed towards the outside. They're going to diffuse through ATP synthase. Once again, they don't like this uh, membrane here. They got to diffuse through a protein. When they diffuse through ATP synthase, you'll see the video we do in class. It'll turn like a motor, just like in photosynthesis. When it turns, it's going to jam the third phosphate onto ATP. So it goes from two, jams it on. Here we go. Let me erase my beautiful drawing for you. Almost done. Okay, this slide you should pause and see if you can figure out what's going on. What's written here is where everything goes or where it was made. So look, carbon dioxide, it's a waste product, citric acid cycle, and a link reaction. Water, it's released from the electron transport chain. All right, and energy. We actually need to go back to that. Here, once the H's go through ATP synthase, they have to match up with something. Otherwise, we can't keep a concentration gradient. Right? We need to have more H pluses out here so that they keep falling through ATP synthase. Well, the H pluses match up with the used electron, so that makes it just a hydrogen, and what we breathe in, an oxygen and another hydrogen. What does that make? H2O or water. So it's pretty cool. Your body makes water with the hydrogens that flow through ATP synthase by combining them with the oxygen you breathe because otherwise we couldn't keep the concentration gradient. All right. I'll figure out how to quick erase one of these days. Here we go. Let's get to the end. So you should pause yourself and ask yourself if you can go through this. Here's another one just trying to show you the products of each part. We're going to diagram this in class and do a pogle. What happens, students, if we run out of oxygen? Whew, I'm almost running out of oxygen here. I got to go work out after this. Right? Glucose, it gets broken out into glycolysis. That can still go on. But without oxygen, we cannot do the Krebs cycle and we cannot do the electron transport chain. You should ask yourself why. We can't do that because things get backed up. Without oxygen, we can't make the water that stops the electron transport chain, which stops the Krebs cycle because we're not making any, we're not going to take the NADH and take the stuff off of it to make NAD+. Since we have no NAD+, we cannot continue this. So your body's evolved, or we have a way to keep making energy when we run out of oxygen. And here's what we do. We take glucose, we do glycolysis, we make ATP, and we make NADH. But here's the problem. We need to get this back to NAD+. We will run out of NAD+, which is an input to glycolysis, and we'll not be able to keep doing glycolysis. We'll not be able to keep making this to ATP. So to get it back to NAD+, what we do is we combine those high energy electrons and H's to pyruvate to make lactic or what's going to become lactic acid. <coughs> this builds up in your muscles 
And it's why you can sprint for about 90 seconds, or just a little bit longer, before you need to stop and you need to breathe some oxygen so that your body can break down its lactic acid. Now you can train yourself to be more efficient by running and training. So this also happens in yeast, and they're going to make, in a, uh, instead of lactic acid, they're going to make ethanol or alcohol. So they do two steps. They're Basically, they need to get NAD plus made again. So they take the pyruvate, they make it into uh, this molecule right here, acetaldehyde, and they're going to add the energy electrons and H to it to make ethanol. So what's the big picture? What's the point of fermentation? The point of fermentation is to make NAD plus. It's to take away the stuff from NADH to make NAD plus so that glycolysis can continue. This way we can keep making ATP when there's no oxygen present. This is called anaerobic respiration. While these ones that require air are called aerobic respiration. All right, students, here's a big picture of it. This should be a... Uh, X through oxygen right here that my big head is covering. But no oxygen, it can't do uh, stuff within the mitochondria. So it's just going to do glycolysis. And in humans, it's going to make lactic acid. And in yeast, it'll make ethanol. All right, students, that was kind of long. Um, I hope that it uh, you learned something. And please ask me some questions in class. And good luck studying for your assessment on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Have a great day. Take care.